Hello, my artists. It's Mrs. Paulson. I don't know why I say that. I know you know who I am. It's like a habit. Um, I have been struggling trying to draw what I want to share with you guys. And oh, because I like to learn too. So um, this week I've been sharing uh, lots of information about Da Vinci because he was really the first artist of his time, although he was like also a great thinker, a scientist, an engineer, a musician, you name it, he did it. Um, and he was called the Renaissance man, right? You might have heard of that. And I thought it would be really cool to talk about human proportions and the Vitruvius man, uh, which is that cool picture of the guy who's naked and his you know, he's in a circle, but also a square. It's a very famous uh, picture. One of 17 that have survived. Um, no, that was a sketch actually. He, Leonardo da Vinci only had about 17 pieces of artwork that survived um, since he lived so long ago. So you have to remember he lived in like 1450 um, to the early 1500s and he, um, he invented, he had the ideas written down in his book. Um, there's so much to say about him. Like when I think about him, uh, he wrote backwards. He wrote right to left so that people wouldn't understand his work. Um, he was that brilliant. Like he invented a scuba helmet in 14, like the late 1400s and a helicopter and a glider. And uh, what else? Like it's crazy what he invented. It's amazing. A catapult. Um, and there's also a link on my page where you can go and see his life size. They, for his 500th year passing of his anniversary, they created life size um, uh, mm, examples of his drawings. So um, it's kind of a cool little tour back in France. A couple of other things I found out about him that um, I was saddened to hear. Uh, he was buried in the church and in the French Revolution in the 1800s, they burned down the church and destroyed it. And so they're not really sure if the remains that say they're Leonardo's are his. They're not sure. He was born um, to a single mom. So he didn't have a last name. And so da Vinci actually means from Vinci, which is the part of um, Italy he was born in. And um, but he did grow up in or maybe it was in France, Vinci. It sounds Italian though to me, right? Um, but uh, I know he grew up in Tuscany and then later went over to, um, he wasn't wealthy. He got into an art school. He never graduated high school um, or finished school. He was so brilliant in art that um, it just took him, uh, carried him to different times too. So, um, so anyways, let's get started. I wanna show you what I've been working on. Uh, also, I'll give you a little, little tour real quick. So I thought this was so cute. They put little happy pants on them to kind of cover up because he's usually, he's usually naked down there. Um, now, uh, Da Vinci was a master of the arts, sciences, and everything in between. He was often referred to as the Renaissance man. Um, Mona Lisa was one of his most famous paintings. That's the most famous painting in the entire world. The most viewed painting in the entire world. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about it. Oh, I have one on my website. I want to show you guys this. This is so funny. Um, bear with me. I know I'm kind of excited here. Uh, I think on your web page, I put a picture. Maybe your teachers already showed me this, but there's even a conspiracy that the Mona Lisa is really Leonardo da Vinci dressed up. So, um, Anyways, I have an um, actual sketchbook that you can flip through. Guess who owns it? One of the richest men in America. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Bill Gates owns his book, one of his books. Um, so this actually is a mathematical problem. Um, they say that it contains an algorithm um, for squaring off a, um, uh, what do they call it? Squaring off a circle is like a math problem. But what um, Vitruvius was a, a designer that he worked with, and um, he believed that uh, all men were eight heads high. And so that's where that came from. So we're going to take a look at that together. Um, it's a little hard for me to 
draw this because it's so mathematical where I'm so free flowing. So bear with me here. Let's um, get you to my overhead. And I also wanted to share with you guys, he played um, an ancient musician, um, an ancient musician, an ancient music, uh, which is called the lyre, um, which is kind of like a harp. So he was a master of that as well. Um, so let's see if I can get this going. So now I get to hear what a lyre, L-Y-R-E sounds like, all right? So <clears throat> here's my little sketches. I have really struggled with this because at first I thought he was a circle in a square, but no, it's a, uh, the circle goes outside of the square. So um, what I want us to do, we're gonna figure this out together. Um, if you have a compass, it makes life a lot easier. If you don't, I'm gonna show you how to do it without it because I could find my one compass in the house. Not sure where it is. Um, I actually need to, um, I wanna look up the Vitruvius man. Vitruvius, Vitruvius man, Vitruvian man. So um, I'm gonna have this little picture up here for me to look at. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll add some music over here. Uh, hang on one quick second, my friends. Sorry, it's a little boring. What you can do is um, you can, we're going to make a perfect square out of four inches. We're going to float a four inch square in the middle. I'm going to go through that as well. But if you wanted to um, do that right now, you could. Uh, let me get liar music, liar. And let's see. Okay, this sounds good. All right, friends. So we've got some music going, some authentic classical music. Um, and start video, share screen. Here we go. Sorry, guys. I know that was kind of boring. Okay. So what I want you to do is what we're gonna to do together is I'm actually going to um, draw, and you guys may think of a better way of doing this. It's just easier. It's kind of um, best for me to kind of work through this this way, the way my mind works. So um, some of you may have a better mathematical mind. What I'm gonna do is um, here, I put this uh, three inches from the edge to start, and then I drew a four inch, one, two, three, four inches. Um, <clears throat> uh, what's it called? A square. I can't talk today. That's the hard part about uh, recording lessons is I can't see you. I don't know what you're doing. And, um, and I talk to myself and I'm rambling and I can't figure out if you guys understand what I'm talking about, because if I'm there in person, I'm like, oh yeah, they get this, or oh, they have no idea what I'm doing right now. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to draw. I used three inches from here, and then this is gonna be, it should be a four inch, um, kind of like a column, all right? And then we're also going to divide that column in half at the two mark, so you can go down your, um, little uh, column here and divide it in half into two. And by the way, as a art student, never knew I'd use math so much. Maybe I would have enjoyed it more if I would have, I kept going, oh, what am I going to need to do with this? And I didn't even know I wanted to be an artist, but I knew I didn't want to be a mathematician. And now I kind of understand math more and enjoy the logic of it. So that should be a two column thing right there. And we're trying to make a four inch perfect square or somewhat perfect, nothing is perfect, right? So I'm gonna start to make things look kind of nice. What we could do is we could start it at the three inches again, just to kind of add a little interest. And I'm gonna draw a line straight across here. 
and then I'm going to draw it four inches down so I can have a nice uh, square kind of floating in the middle because what we need to do is draw a nice circle around our square. So let's connect those lines now. So what you're looking for is this should be four inches, four inches, and four inches. So here's our square. I'm gonna drag the lines out a little bit longer just because it kind of makes me realize where we're stopping. All right, and if we are to look at his drawing, hmm, from his book, you see the circle goes past the square. You see that? So I want to um, draw it relatively the same. Now, if you have a compass super duper, if you do not like me, that's always hard. So there's so many things as um, an art major, uh, it makes you realize how to be resourceful so you can look for something that's a circle that's the right size. This is too small, but what you can do is draw a little circle and then pull it out from there. So that's like a nice circle, hopefully, from my tracing. And then what I could do is bring it out one inch all the way around and draw an inch all the way around, right? See what I'm doing? And you can do that also from just the center and keeping a um like I did it from here earlier in my earlier drawings and then can you can draw it from from the center so I'm right now gonna um connect these lines out here now another thing you can do is if you have a string oh I think I have I was thinking I don't have a string, but I think I know where a string is. I found a um, shoelace, but it's a little too um, taut. It, it can be, um, what's I'm gonna call it? It can be stretchy or not. So I'm going to um, use something funny. I'm gonna use a phone cord. We all have these around, right? I'm just gonna show you cute little trick, little fun stuff. So <clears throat> for instance, like I could say, okay, this is my center and this is where I want it to drag. So I can attach this kind of just like a compass and drag it all the way around. We might have to start again. You see what I'm doing? So I'm starting at that and I'm using my string as my compass. So that's another thing you can do. But I'm just gonna finish this because I'm so chitty chatty today. I wanna get this going. So you guys go ahead and figure out how, hopefully you have a compass handy. If not, you can do it the hard way like me and we'll get there. It takes a little bit of time, which I could fast forward my video, but I don't know how to do that yet. And then you can kind of play connect the dots. Okay, so that's around and I'm gonna erase my inner circle because I had nothing to do with what I was trying to do. I was just showing you that I could trace one and then go from there. It's not, well, it's not perfect. Nothing is, but hey, it's something. And so now we, um, I already told you guys that the, um, the proportion is eight, eight heads. So um, if you measure our four inch square, we should have, um, at every inch, every half inch, would be a new part of the body, like a, um, a uh, what's it called? The, something that we could use to help us get there. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm saying, how to explain that. So I put a, every half inch, a line. And so this is another line and this is another line. So his head, I'm gonna have to keep looking at my, at my uh, phone. His head starts at the square. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are gonna add an oval head right here. 
And then friends, I'm gonna zoom in because you guys need to know this, how to draw a head. It's, it's pretty simple once you get used to it in practice. Um, so we're doing an oval and then you um, slice an oval in half and that's where the eyes go. Then you cut that line in half from the eyes to the bottom, you're gonna cut that line in half. And then this middle line to the chin, you're gonna cut that in half and that's the mouth. The nose runs to there. The ears would be on the side of the head. And the Vitruvius man actually has um, wavy, cool, long hair and it's split in the middle. So um, you can do little wavy, kind of crazy, little wavy hair here. It's all in the details, friends. It's gonna have um, a neck along with his arms that reach all the way to the ends. So you're just gonna put him out like he's flying. Okay. And um, his belly button is gonna be right in the middle pretty much. Okay, and from his belly button, right below here are gonna be his legs that are, um, and they're not really, I, there's some theories why he's standing in different directions. Um, it's interesting because I never really noticed that he was, like his feet are off to the side. Um, for instance, in this one, you see his feet have, um, they have the calf muscles and the ankle, but his foot is going sideways. And then this one goes a little bit sideways too with his longer foot on the side. And we're just gonna take that all the way up. Okay, and then um, his belly button tapers in to his belly button, right? Spreading out so. Ooh, that was a lot of heart. I'm cleaning this up so you can see a little better. Okay, and then these are gonna be his hands that'll come all the way to the edge of the square. It looks a little off kilter. So um, to draw his arms and stuff, now he had, um, he loved the human anatomy. I told you that he, um, these would be muscles, these would be muscles, and this would be a hand. A big lump of muscles, muscles to his hands, okay? And then here he has this with a little bit of a waist. Maybe his belly button's a little bit taller, huh? And then down here, be mature, my friends. Just, you know, kind of make like a little, little fold there, a little, little dash. Okay, and so what he was trying to show, I don't, I think my mind is not quite bright enough to understand what he, and I'm, I'm pretty smart, but um, confusing what there, there's so many things out there that I don't really know what, um, what he was trying to prove, whether it's the golden ratio, he had, um, he was really fascinated by that. Um, and again, these are gonna be muscles too with hands. These are muscles. So he's circling, squaring off a circle. And that in the Renaissance was a big deal. I'm not sure what it means. And then he's on this circle, but the circle comes inside his, his circle here. I don't know. I guess the circle is supposed to line up with the line. That's why, forgive me, I told you it's a little too technical for this girl. I am not a math girl. Um, I, I envy the girls that are math girls. It's great. It's great to do that, to understand math. I understand it a little bit, but not enough. Not Leonardo da Vinci stuff. Okay, so then he's got his calves. See how I did that? I spread his legs. I just thought it would be a cool, iconic thing for you to remember when you're older. You'll be like, oh yeah, I drew that. Vitruvius man in in that uh, fifth or sixth grade, right? So 
I think I told you everything I know about Mr. Leonardo da Vinci, not DiCaprio, not to be confused. Um, so these are his kneecaps here. So it's kind of cool, right? And then what I really love so much about his technical drawings is he also put these cool lines, um, like hashtaggy lines right here, um, right next to the man on each side. So it was like, a, I don't know how to describe it, kind of like a shadow. And they are straight little hashtag lines. Now, what I want you guys to learn to do is to not only learn proportions. So his head should technically be, his body should be eight heads high. So another way of measuring, I think I've shown you guys this, is by using pencils or things around you. I'm going to pull up this back a little bit. So for instance, his head is the size of this green one. So he should be one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. <laughs> Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe that's why his legs look a little short to me. Oh my God. Well, dear, dear, dear friend, maybe, maybe this circle over here, Miss Paulson, was correct. And that's, I shouldn't have shortened it. So I think that's what happened. <laughs> so we're allowed, we're human. I make mistakes too. I know you guys know that. So when he spreads out, I think that the point of showing this was that even though it changes your proportions, you can still fit in a circle. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's tons of videos about it. And I hope you're interested to understand why as well. So his um, body, what we can do is we can work on a little bit of shading. So he's got his pectoral muscles and a little bit of uh, the abs here. And his waist kind of comes in and he's got those hip bones here. And his muscles go in here for his big legs, his big strong legs. And man, he, he studied all the crazy muscles. It's amazing. So, um, so I'm just showing you how I sketch so you can kind of get an idea of all this. Okay, this was not supposed to be turned out. And then these feetsies are kind of like facing it. This one is sideways, like a plie or whatever. So these are muscles here as well. He's not a bad looking guy. I'm gonna erase his face and go back on that again. So remember to make a face, you take the oval, cut it in half. That's where your eyes will lie. Cut them um, from the eyes to the chin in half. And then the, the new line with the chin for the mouth. So that's how that works. So pretty simple. And he has that crazy hair. Um, so if you um, if you like what you've done, I think this hand actually goes all the way out to here. I don't know, guys. You know it's recognizable. You understood the proportions a bit. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So. Next time you can know, I'm not saying I did it right, but you now know that the proportion is supposed to be about eight heads high. So I'm erasing some of the sketchy muscle parts we did. And, um, oh, interesting. I'm gonna see how, what, how did he do these hashtags under him? So he just did, okay, so he still did these here for his head. And he did, um, sideways ones for these that barely show up, but something nonetheless. 
So, um, and there's his backwards writing. It's English, but it's backwards. It almost looks Arab because it's so cursive and fun. So anyways, here we go. And so if you've gotten that far and you're happy with it, it's fun to be able to um, draw it in a brown color, like Leonardo's sketches, if you have the time. Um, he always drew in like a sepia color. And so this would make it look a little bit more authentic. Leonardo DiCaprio, no, Da Vinci's poor guy. I don't mean to disrespect you, Mr. Leonardo. Get his hands, his arms. It looks cool with color a little bit. Make a color in whatever you want, however you want. Oh, this heart is gonna put me to sleep. This pulsing gets tired. I need to maybe even color him in lightly with your colored pencil a little bit. And now you know what he is, um, he is tall. You'll see him everywhere. Um, I'd like to, I'm going to try and find, I've looked at mm, dozens of videos on it and I really, there's none that stand out that I thought were worthy of watching, but I'm going to, I'm going to try again one more time because um, there's so much mystery and so much to these drawings that um, I'm hoping that I can find one. And I also don't want to have one with his, his pants off for you guys. So everybody stays mature. So here we go. Here's our, our Leonardo the cat. Uh, I keep doing that. I should have thought about it. Leonardo um, da Vinci's the Vitruvian, Vitruvian man. And um, hopefully you'll learn some even cooler facts about this particular drawing. Um, it's supposed to connect the mind, body, science. Um, religion, all kinds of stuff. I don't get it, but that's what he said. So. All right, friends. So I hope you like your drawing. Hope you learned a little bit about this. Um, you can always how to draw a face. So once again, I want you guys to know how to do that. You get an egg shape, cut it in half. That's where your eyes are gonna go. Your nose. So then from here to here, you cut that in half. And then from here to here, you cut this in half, that's all. And then this will be your nose line. Okay, this is your eyes. You want eyebrows. And this will be your mouth. And then over here is where your ears are. And then you can draw a neck from the side of the head. Don't draw that teeny, tiny neck. It looks weird, right? So you wanna just have it, um, Okay, friends, so, and then the hair, then you can kind of decorate the hair from there, right? That's my kind of crazy hair today. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson and learning a bit about Leonardo da Vinci. He is one of the most famous, famous um, human beings ever. He did paint along with Michelangelo at the same time. Um, Michelangelo, I used to get them confused. He is not this inventor thinker like Leonardo. He was just a strict, strictly an artist who painted the Sistine Chapel in um, Rome in the Vatican on his back for like years. And it's beautiful, really a spectacular. We went um, several years ago and um, I felt really blessed to see that in person. So um, travel, 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 go see the art and um, enjoy your surroundings and your history and where we came from too. It's important to know that. So you guys take care and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.